What's up guys, Sila here and I am back with another video and this time we're going to be running through mount grinds that can be done continuously throughout a whole day that at the end of the grind you'll be given a guaranteed mount and in theory these grinds can be completed in a day, it might take a full day but in theory within 16 or maybe a little bit more hours you can complete the grind and get yourself a new mount. The first mount up on our list is going to be Rat Stallion, and this is a quite nice looking mount because it's very unique. There's no other rat model mounts in the game, so if you do want a unique ground mount, then this is certainly one to go after. And this grind is a little bit rough, especially now that we've moved into Battle for Azeroth. It was a lot easier at Legion, especially at the beginning, because you could do this in a raid group and you'd basically be multiplying the amount of coins you could get and finishing the achievement a lot faster. But now that we've moved on to Battle for Azeroth and some changes have come in since then, making this grind a little bit of a longer one, but it can in theory be done in 16 hours, it's just going to be coming quite close to that number depending on RNG. So the way you get this mount is through collecting 20,000 Sightless Eyes in Dalaran, which is you know Dalaran Legion found in Broken Isles, and in the sewers there'll be these, it's kind of like a PvP-ish area, and you'll find these Sightless Eyes through various methods. Now, once you collect 20,000, you'll be awarded with Underbelly Tycoon and you'll get the mount. But you don't have to loot 20,000 and keep 20,000 on you. You just need to have looted 20,000 at some point. So you could loot, you know, 5,000, spend 2,000. You'll still have 5,000 towards the achievement. So the way this works is you'll head into Dalaran Sewers. And there's a few different methods, as I mentioned, of getting Sightless Eyes. The first is if there are guards up. And by guards up, that means no PvP can take place then bosses will have a chance of spawning, they usually spawn within a few minutes. And what will happen is a boss will spawn, it'll be marked on the map, you'll go kill it, and you'll get about 50 to 90 sightless eyes. But you will be able to buy a wild mana wand from Dazik, it'll be marked on the map now. And this costs 175, which is fine to buy because we don't care about how many we currently have, just how many we can gain. And if you use this wand on one of the bosses, it'll make them harder to kill but it will mean they give about 160 to about 220 coins instead. So you're going to be massively increasing the amount of coins you can get, increasing the, the farm speed and making this farm a lot quicker. If the guards are down, which you can pay to bring them back by speaking to the, the guard master, um, but if they are down, then you can do PvP, which will give you about 10 to 50 coins per or sightless eyes per kill that you do. There'll also be these chests that can spawn, and from the small chest you'll get 10, from the medium chest you'll get 40 and from the big chest you'll get 100. So you want to be looting those if possible and running around doing that. Outside of those methods, there are also fishing nodes towards kind of like the black market auction house area. And these will be green pools and you're fishing those and you're going to get about 5 to 15. So not the best use of your time, but if you want to do some fishing, that's an option too. There are also rats in the area and these, if you pet battle them, will give you about 75 per win. So you can battle the pets if you want to too. There's also four various NPCs that you can talk to that will sell you items. Uh, these cost 250 sightless eyes each, and there will be the Croc Mojo from Kahuta, the Widow Sister contract from The Widow, Screech a Whistle from Strap Buckle Bolt, and the Imp Binding contract from Matthew Rabis. And as I mentioned, these cost 250, and what you'll do is use these, and they'll spawn in a bunch of mobs that you can kill. And when you loot them, you'll get a small amount of sightless eyes, but it's a good way of filling the gaps between stuff that, you know, nothing to do. Especially if the guards are up, then you're not going to have PvP or anything to do, but you're waiting for the bosses to spawn. Then it's great to run around and kill those mobs and just be gaining some kind of sightless eyes that way. Finally, there is a quest from Fizzy Liver Snapper, or Zapper, and this is a random spawn, so it's not always going to be up. But if it is up, you can go and speak to her and you'll get 150 sightless eyes for just drinking a potion. So if it is up, definitely go and do that too. And it's just a case of rinse and repeating those methods, getting as many sightless eyes as possible and com um, completing the achievement. Now, the best way is probably to do the bosses, especially with the wand on them, because that's going to be giving you near enough 200 per kill. And you, you're going to be spending 175 each time, which isn't too bad. As I said, we don't care about how many we currently own, just how many we can get. So per time... The bosses is probably the best way of going about it, so you might be better to just pay off the guard master to bring the guards back again and keep doing it that way. But either way, grind up your sightless eyes and get yourself a mount. The next mounts up on our list are going to be the Saltwater Seahorse and the Slitwing Albatross, and both of these mounts come from island expeditions from the doubloons that you'll get from completing island expeditions. The Saltwater Seahorse costing 500 and the Slitwing Albatross costing 1,000, and... 
technically you can get a thousand in a day you are going to have to be on the more lucky side but 500 is definitely something you can achieve and the way this is done is basically running through island expeditions as efficiently as possible and um, it's better to do mythic if you can get a pre-made group and run through mythic but if you're on your own or you don't want to group with people then heroic is still fine you just need to make your runs as efficient and quick as possible you can buy the items if you want to but i wouldn't really recommend it because you're going to be spending doubloons so just pick talents or other things that you can get to uh, make the runs as efficient as possible and just run through the islands you know just killing things collecting things just doing your best get the runs as quick as possible and get as many doubloons as possible. Since 8.1.5, this has been made a lot better because you'll always get a bag, and then you'll have the chances of getting the bigger bags as well. It's going to give you a good chunk of doubloons. And one big thing to note, though, to make this feasible in a day, you will need the island plunderer ability, which comes from, like, the horde or alliance kind of little faction area nearby. Uh, go there, trade, uh, pick one of your perks to be the island plunderer. And um, to get this perk, though, you will need to have done five different islands. So if this is your first week of doing islands, you're not going to be able to get it because only three islands are available. But do the three islands, come back next week, do another two, and you'll be able to start researching the island plunderer perk, which is going to give you a chance of getting even more doubloons. So very, very key for doubloon farming. Once you've got your doubloons, you can head to the doubloon vendor, which is nearby the island expedition people, and pick up your mounts. Very simple. The next mount up on our list is going to be the Bleak Hoof Ruin Strider. And if you like to grind mobs over and over again, then this one might be for you. But honestly, it's not as bad as it sounds. So to get this mount, you need to complete the achievement and two mana buns, which is to kill 2,000 non-trivial demons in Argus. And as I said, 2,000 sounds like a lot, but they're pretty quick to kill if you're 120. And it won't take you that long. It's still going to be a bit of a grind. But it's not going to be that bad, you know? So the best way to go about doing this is to go to Korkun or Krokun. And if you speak to Ramul, if uh, the Vindicar is above Krokun, then he'll be able to tell you, uh, teleport you down to the Darkfall Ridge. You'll run down the path and you'll find these portals, these green portals, you can't miss them. If you stand in front of one and just continuously keep killing the mobs that come out of those portals, then you'll be killing the demons that you need to go towards the achievement. And that's great because you're not having to run around, there's no downtime, there's not really any big requirements. You just stand there and smack the things that come out. So it's very kind of relaxed to do. You could even do it while watching something or doing something else as it doesn't really require much attention. Just keep doing that until you get your 2,000 kills and you're done. Now, if you've never been to Argus before, you will need to unlock Argus. And if you don't know how to do that, then I'll quickly explain that too. First of all, you'll need to complete the Uniting the Isles, which is from 110 upwards. And that is to get friendly with the main four factions in the Legion leveling zones. So once you've done that, you'll be able to head to Khadgar in Dalaran in the Violet Citadel. And you'll be able to pick up World Quests. Once you've unlocked World Quests, then you'll be able to head to the Dalaran Landing. And you'll be able to start the Broken Shore Assault, which is a, a scenario that you'll have to run through. Once you've ran through the scenario, just kind of hand in the couple of quests when you're at the base and you'll unlock your kind of broken short base. Once your base is unlocked, then you'll be able to fly back to the Violet Citadel, speak to Cadgown once again, and he should have a quest for you called the Hand of Fate, which will start your Argus intro quest line. Just run through that and that will take you to Argus and you'll be able to begin slaying demons. There you go, and that is another mount down. If you just got finished getting the Bleak Hoof Ruin Strider and you want more mobs to grind for some reason, then I have another mount up for you very similar, which is the Bone White Raptor. And to get the Bone White Raptor, you need to collect 9,999 giant dinosaur bones, which you can get from the Isle of Giants. This is an island you'll find off the north coast of Pandaria. You will be dismounted on your way there, so you'll have to kind of walk across the last bit of the water. But there'll be a bunch of dinosaurs here, there'll be Triceratopses, there'll be T-Rexes, and you'll basically just run around the island, it's quite a big island, you'll run around in a full circle, and just kill everything in your path. Loot them, and you'll get uh, the dinosaur bones, keep doing that until you get 9,999, and then you'll be able to get the mount. Now the nice thing about this grind too is, at 120 the mobs are trivial, they'll die very easily, even though they're uh, elites, uh, they'll die quite quickly and quite easily. But you'll also have a chance of getting a pet from this, and you'll also have a chance of getting a primal egg, which after a few days will hatch into, I think it's one of three mounts. 
So you're going to be getting an extra mount from this if you don't have it too, which is kind of nice. Now the, the dinosaur bones could be bought off the auction house if you want to, but as I said, they're quite easy to grind. It's just going to take a bit of time. And by the time you run around the full island, they should be starting to respawn again anyway. So you should have very little time uh, downtime doing this. Now, once you have your 9,999, then you'll head to Kuma, who can be found on the left side of the island in a little cave. And he'll have a quest called a mountain of giant dinosaur bones. You'll hand that in and that will get you the mount. As simple as that, just grind away until you're done. If you're bored of killing mobs and you want to start killing players instead, then the Ash Hide Mushan grind might be for you instead. And that is to basically collect 500 bloody coins, which can only be obtained from players. And to start this grind, you will need to head to the Timeless Isle. Timeless Isle is found in Pandaria off to the right side of the Jade Forest. Head to the Blazing Way on the Timeless Isle, which is off to the right side again. And there you'll find an NPC called Speaker Gulen who will sell you a range of different items, eventually he'll sell you the mount, but the item that we care about is the Fire Watcher's Oath, which is going to cost you, I think it's 100 timeless coins, and then with that item, you'll basically turn that on, you know, use it, and you'll be able to go kill players, when you kill players with it, you'll get a bloody coin, this can be done in world PvP, this can be done in battlegrounds, so you just want to be grinding through PvP in whatever way you want, and collect 500 bloody coins. Once you've gotten your 500 bloody coins, then you'll head back to Speaker Gulen and you'll be able to buy them out. Now, this only comes from honorable kills as far as I know, so helping someone die or be killed won't get you a coin, but you have to actually deliver the killing blow, and that will give you the coin instead. So, if you only assist and get an honorable kill, that's not going to work. You actually need the killing blow, which will then give you a bloody coin. Kill 500 players and you'll get yourself the mount. If you're tired of killing things in general and want a more relaxed grind, then the Brine Deep Bottom Feeder might be for you. And this grind is basically a fishing grind. You need to fish over and over again and then get the mount. Now, this is going to take about 900 drowned mana, which they have a fairly low drop chance, so it's going to be a long grind. Um, you only need 100 for the mount, but you're going to need about 800 to get Conjurer Magros from Pal all the way up to Best Friend. And then once you're Best Friend, you're going to be able to purchase the mount. So to get this grind started, you will need to find Conjurer Magos, and he is found off the northwest of Dalaran, the Legion Dalaran found in Broken Shores. You can get there with flying or using like a glider or something to get to his island, or alternatively, if you can't do any of those things for some reason, then you can fish up the emblem of Magos in the Dalaran sewers uh, near the Widow, and keep fishing there, you'll eventually get an item that will teleport you there instead. Once you're on the island, he'll have a quest for you to fish up a um, drowned mana. And once you've hand, you know, you'll hand that in, you'll get 250 reputation. And you'll basically just repeat that. You can hand in either 1 or 50, oh sorry, 10. And you'll get 50 per hand in past that point. So you'll get either 50 or 500 rep, depending on how many you're handing in. Keep doing that until you're best friends with him, which I said will take around 800-ish. A bit more than 800 drowned mana. Once you're best friends, then you can buy the mount for an additional 100. And other things to note too is that there'll be an item that can drop while you're doing this called the Mark of Aquios, I think it is, which will summon a mob and when you kill that mob you'll get guaranteed catches for a bit. So definitely worth doing those if you get them. And ideally this grind could be done in a raid group, it's the best way to do it, or sorry, a group in general. Raid group's better though because you're going to be getting more of those mob spawns which means you're going to be getting a better yield overall. Um, but you can do it solo, it's just going to take a lot more time, but can definitely be done in a day. So just keep fishing up and getting your drowned manners and eventually you'll be done. The next grind up is the Thundering Ruby Cloud Serpent and this is much more of an RNG grind because you need to collect 10 Sky Shards which are on an RNG drop chance and then you'll use those 10 Sky Shards to combine them and be able to use an item on a mob that's flying around called Alana. Once you kill Alana you'll get a mount that will be BOE but you can use that and you'll get yourself the Thundering Ruby Cloud Serpent. Now, as I said, this is a bit more of an RNG grind, but people have got it done in 6 or 7 hours. Some people get it done in about 12 or 14 hours, um, and some people get really unlucky and it takes them much longer than that. But in general, kind of the 12 to 14 hour mark seems about right uh, for the average person, depending on how fast you're going through this. Now, the way you get Sky Shards is head into the Veil of the Eternal Blossoms and basically killing mobs. Now, ideally, you want to be killing the Mogu up on the kind of west side of the zone, just flying around, killing all the Mogu, and killing the Mogu will give you a chance of getting the Sky Shards. They'll also give you the Gaolai Cash Keys, which we can use inside the, the Gaolai Vault, 
and you'll also be getting treasures of the veil from the mobs or from the raz as well and all these three different things can give you sky shards so you want to you want to be opening the treasures of the veil you want to be using your gaolai keys inside the vault as there'll be a bunch of caches in there if you head down the left side a bunch of caches you can open those will have a chance of giving sky shards too and then you'll also have just the mob grind as well, which will have a chance of giving you a sky shard. Now these are bind on account too, so if you do have one on an old character, you can send it over to your new character and have one extra. So do keep that in mind too, but it's just a case of grinding the mobs. I would recommend getting a few keys going into the vaults and opening them, because there is a limited amount of chests or caches in there. So it's best to, to kind of be using them every so often. Um, I'd say do over a path around kill all the mobs outside and then go into the vaults and open the caches and then by the time you come out again all the mobs should have respawned again and you can kind of repeat that way that way you're kind of not locking yourself out of no caches left or you've not got enough caches for keys and you're not kind of waiting for mobs to respawn but yeah just keep doing that until you have 10 sky shards get alani alani does have a bit of a, a respawn but you could kind of go to a different realm or something or check non-war mode or war mode and um, kill alani and get yourself the thundering ruby cloud serpent next up is another fishing grind and that is for the crimson water strider which very similar to the azure water strider is a water walking mount for now at least and this is a fairly lengthy grind one that's going to kind of push the 16 hour limit to get this in a day as it's rng based to a certain extent and is fairly lengthy in general and does have a bit of a prerequisite before you can even get started so to get things started, you will need a level 3 garrison in Warlords of Draenor. So go out there, set up your level 3 garrison, and then you'll need to get a level 3 fishing shack. To get a level 3 fishing shack, you're going to have to complete the Draenor Angler achievement, which requires you to capture or fish up 100 of the enormous types of fish from the various different zones. So you have to go to Spires, Talador, Shadowmoon, Frostfire, Nagrand, and Golgrand, and even on the coast as well. And you're just going to have to keep fishing and fishing and fishing, um, until you get these enormous fish. So once you get the, all the enormous fish, then you'll get the achievement, it means you can head back to your garrison and get a level three garrison. And then from there, you'll have to go on a quest chain to go and recruit Nat Peggle to your garrison. And then once you've finally done all that, you'll be in your garrison and you'll be able to start actually working towards reputation with him. So you will need to get him from pal to best friend. And the way you're gonna be doing that continuously is through fishing up Lunkers. Um, so Lunkers are kind of like a rare drop from the pools around all the different zones. It doesn't matter which one you go for. People say Nagrand is one of the better go uh, spots to go for. But just head out there, look for the pools of fish, fish in them, and keep going until you get Lunkers. And then you'll go back to Nat Peggle, you'll hand them in, and you'll get Reputation. And you basically need to keep rinsing and repeating that until you get him to best friend. And then you'll also need to get some of these coins, but you'll get coins every time you hand in Lunkers. And if you need more coins, then I recommend just fishing in your garrison and you'll get these items that summon a little mob and the mob you'll kill and you'll get coins from that too. Or you can continuously do lunkers, but you should be pretty close to the 100 that you need for the mount by the time you get him to best friend. So the coin part shouldn't be too much of an issue. It's just going to be getting him to best friend is going to be the struggle. So this one's a bit borderline on whether you can get it done in a day. It depends on where you are currently with your garrison. If you already have a level 3 fishing shack, then it's going to be, uh, be making it a lot more doable. But having to do the Draenor Angler first, that's going to add a big chunk of time on and probably make it borderline into two days and a lot of fishing at that. The next grind up is nice for people who want to try some instance PvP or you already like doing instance PvP and that is going to be the Mark of Honor mount. So from this you'll get the like Black War Raptor or Black War Wolf. There's actually a bunch of them that you can get and they cost 15 Marks of Honor each. And you get Marks of Honor from doing certain instance PvP. So Battlegrounds, Rated Battlegrounds, 2v2 Arena, 3v3 Arena. And from doing that content you'll have a chance of getting uh, Marks of Honor. Once you get 15, you'll head to your PvP vendor in either Orgrimmar or Stormwind. There'll be a guy in a mount, and you'll be able to speak to them and trade in 15 Marks of Honor for a mount. Now, Marks of Honor are bind on account, so you can check your other characters too, see if they have any, and send them all over to one character, get your 15, and you'll be able to purchase a mount. So pretty straightforward, and a nice little grind if you do like doing PvP. On top of that as well, you can be working towards an honor level mount as well. There's mounts that come from various stages of honor level. So say for example, level 15, you'll get a mount for that. So if you are kind of close to an honor level that gives a mount, 
it might be worth pushing a little bit further and getting your honor level mount as well. The next grind up is another fishing grind and that is for the dark water skate. Now the downside is this is a limited grind. You can only do it when the dark moon fair is active. It's one reason I was thinking of not including it on this list. But the dark moon fair is around every month for just less than a week. So it's not that long of a wait for the dark moon fair to be back. And it's a fairly simple grind. You just go to the dark moon fair, go to the coast and start fishing. And when you fish, you'll get these dark moon dagger moors and some other things that can contain the Dark Moon Dagamores too. Get 500 of them, head to the vendor at the Dark Moon Fair, and hand them in for the Dark Water Skate. Just gotta get 500. Now, you will need your vanilla fishing, and you will need it to be about 60, preferably 100 though, because at 100 you'll be getting them guaranteed every cast. If it's below that, then you're gonna start getting greys and stuff, so you do want your vanilla fishing as high as possible, but just keep fishing, you'll eventually you'll get your fishing up anyway and then you'll get enough for the Dark Moon Fair Skate, uh, the Dark Water Skate. Now you can buy the fish, but honestly I wouldn't recommend it. This grind is fairly short, it only takes a few hours at most, so not really worth the time of buying them in my opinion, but there, there you go. So that technically does bring us to the end of the mounts on this list, but I did want to give a few mounts honourable mentions too. The first one up being the Conqueror Scythe Maw, which comes from the meta achievement Conqueror of Azeroth. Now the ch achievements mainly in this meta achievement are to get a thousand honor in the various BFA zones, which is about a hundred kills, which can be grinded out, but it is a little bit RNG on depending on how many players are around for you to kill. And also there's an achievement called Band of Brothers that you need to do that requires multiple people to get it as well. So because of those things, I didn't really feel like it's viable to say it's doable in a day. It's very, very RNG and can sway in a lot of situations. Next up is the Reputation Mounts. There's a bunch of reputations that you can grind out in a day. But I recently covered those in a two-part series that was a 40-minute series total. And didn't want to cover them again because this video would be like an hour long. So... Didn't cover those again, so if you are interested in those ones though, there'll be links in the description and probably a pop-up in the top right corner now, and you can head to those videos, and these are, those are basically mount grinds that you can do continuously, and at the end of it you'll be able to get mounts from it. There's also the Najatar Blood Serpent, and this is to get 20 Abyss Fragments from the kind of Naga or the um, Tide Sage, you know, the, the Shrine mobs that are uh, old god fanatic type people. Uh, kill those in Battle for Azeroth zones and you'll have a chance of getting an Abyss Fragment, you need 20 of those. But this is a more RNG grind than Alani, the, the drop rate is a lot more harsh. And honestly, for the time it takes to get the Twenta, your time would be better spent just grinding gold and buying them, because on my realm all 20 go for about 45k. So honestly, your time's best, uh, better spent elsewhere. There's also these secret mounts, which are borderline whether you can class them as a grind. Um, but that's like the Hive Mind, the Fathom Dweller, the Riddler's Mind Worm, and the Lucid Nightmare. You go through like a, a progression, a, a kind of secret chain, and at the end of it you'll get mounts. Now it's borderline if you want to consider those grinds though. There's also the Brawler's Guild, very similar situation where you go through a quest chain, you do the Brawler's Fights or whatever, and at the end of it you'll be rewarded with Bruce. And then finally the, is the Glory Meta Achievements, like Glory of the Ulduar Raider, you'll go through that. Most of them are so, well, a good chunk of soloable. And you go through that and you'll get a mount. But once again, it's whether you can class that as a grind because you just go through it and you do it once and there's not really much grinding behind it. But those are a few mounts that I wanted to mention anyway. And that does bring us to a final end of the video. So if you did enjoy the video, then thank you for watching. As always, look out for more videos coming soon. And also check out our Discord server. I do have a Discord server where people share their latest mount drops that they're hyped about or talk about WoW. And we also do get some viewer stuff on the go too. Like a couple of weeks ago, we did all the Legion uh, meta achievements for the mounts. So there'll be a link in the description down below if you're interested in that. But thanks all for watching. Look out for more videos coming soon. See ya.